Welcome everybody to your Tuesday night NWSL Live. Jordan Angeli here to host you through another show. We've got an amazing guest on tap here tonight. But first, we got to get to our three points. So I'm going to welcome in my pals, Jeff Kasuf, Lori Lindsay. Guys, it was a wild weekend, a lot happening. Lori's been traveling since 3 a.m. But honestly, Lori, you I mean, the hair looks the same. <laughs> Listen, I mean, that's a, you just put some um what is it called? I almost called it ointment. That's how tired I am. Oh, ointment in your hair and then you're good to go. Uh, and then I was going to say materials in your hair. So whatever it is, product, there it is. Great. And then it never moves. So All right, Jeff, Jeff, any tips on hair or are you going to just let Lori take, take that one? I got, I, th I think, you know, my answer here is just. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, good to see you guys. A lot to talk about today. We have Estelle Johnson on in just a little bit, which will be very fun to talk with her. But before that, let's get into our three points. We're going to each talk about something over the weekend that we found interesting. Who wants to go first? Not everybody at once. <laughs> Jeff's going, Jeff's going All right, first. Jeff, Jeff, you're up first. What, um, what'd you like about the weekend? Well, a lot of things. I think a lot of interesting games and, and we'll talk about all of them, obviously, but I think, um, you know, a great story that we saw Friday night with Michaela Bam coming in for Houston first game, you know, announced earlier that day um, as a signing and played in Houston as a, a kid, really, mm -hmm. essentially, you know, what became the Dynamo Dash Academy, which I think is, is really cool, obviously, because we start talking about, you know, progression of the sport and wanting to see, you know, eventually maybe some homegrown players, whatever that term might mean. And, you know, here's a player who comes in off the bench, um, a few minutes later, she's scoring an equalizer and a pretty nice comeback for Houston. A great and, and really fun afterward. I, I think we talked to her for 15 or 20 minutes after that game. And, and it was just, uh, you know, as you can imagine, she was buzzing. She was buzzing after she scored it. Yeah. Like she was not letting anybody <laughs> stand in her way. Just like, I'm getting this ball. I'm scoring it. It was amazing to see and cool to see like virtually a homegrown player, right? I know that term has been used in other leagues. But so many things about this, Lori, were, were fun to watch. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's it's a huge pickup just in the fact that, like, what a personality, too. Not only, like, her ability on the field, but I think when you start to look at, like, the parity between all these teams and to be able to bring in a player um, that, um, you know, isn't even at full capacity yet, can score a big goal, but then you can see what that means to this Houston team to get the equalizer and then also just the in infectious personality. And th that's going to be needed, especially this stretch of games that'll be critical for a lot of teams being so tight in the, in the playoff race. Yeah, here she is. I'm not going to stop till it's in. Love that <laughs> from her. Um, what a special goal for her at this point in her career being back in Houston. So I like that, Jeff. Good point. Um, gosh, Lori, now you and me, I think I'm going to go next. Is that okay? Can I go? Yeah, totally. You always go last. So you get to go. Okay. okay. Big news over the weekend. Really just yesterday, you guys, Carly Lloyd is going to be retiring at the end of the year. And when you think about her, man, it, you not only think about goals in professional leagues, but of course, goals for the U S women's national team. I just think she is such the epitome of working hard and believing in yourself and no matter what. Um, and her career has been such a cool thing to watch. So, of course, we're sad she's going to be leaving NWSL. But man, what a way to go out. She's done basically everything you can do. 312 caps for the women's national team, 128 goals. I, I was looking at stats just in NWSL, 97 games in NWSL, 39 goals. So I'm sure she wants to add to that tally a little bit too before she leaves. But Jeff, what do you think about when you think about Carly Lloyd? Yeah, I do think, um, I wrote this yesterday too, and just haven't been able to, to see uh, five, six years ago now. Um, I spent a day like with her at her training, you know, personal training. And, and I think, um, you know, I really do think, you know, there, there's a belief that she has in herself that, you know, I, I think every pro athlete has to, to different degrees and, and different ways, but um, she always found a way to make that work in exactly how she needed it to work, even if mm -hmm. other didn't wasn't how other people made it work, if other people didn't understand how she made it work. You know, I think that was kind of, she always understood herself to get the best out of herself, even, 
you know, the stat of 71% of her goals for the national team after age 30, I think yeah. that is, you know, exactly that. That's her understanding. Ridiculous. You know, what needs to be done at that moment, whenever that moment is. Yeah. Lori, you played with her for a long time. Can you just uh, give us, give us like a funny Carly story? Oh, well, listen, I, Carly's serious. Like there was a <laughs> joke too. Uh, but I do like how um, Jeff just put that in terms of like, you know, um, spitting the story in a lot of ways to work to the, how, how she needs it to work for the best um, outcome for her, right? Throughout a career um, in terms of like, you know, your world play of the year twice that like, I'm not pretty sure you're not the underdog anymore, but she was the underdog. So, you know, according to Carly, which I thought is awesome. And I think that alone, that was fun to see. And, and she would joke. So please don't make me, let me paint a picture of like very serious Carly, but um, I'm trying to think if I, I don't know if I have a funny story, but I, I think the approach that she took every single day and to reinvent herself going from like an attacking midfielder to more of a number nine later in the career, her career is huge. And what was a stat that's been floating around in every gold medal match that she's played, she scored at least a goal, which yeah. is, it's just unbelievable. Yeah. And, you know, I don't think, I don't think we're going to see, you know, I said this after Christine Lilly and uh, Christy Rampone to, in terms of not getting players to 300 caps. So I think that's probably even more true now. I don't think we're going to see a player that scored in almost half of their games that they played at the international level, 17 years. I mean, it's, it's quite remarkable um, what she's done and and to stay relatively injury free Mm -hmm. throughout to be be able to get those milestones. So that stat gave me chills, scored in nearly half your international games. That's, that's crazy. That's really crazy. Um, All right. So that's, it's not over. So get your tickets. It's not over. Yeah, get your tickets. <laughs> okay. Um, to Gotham FC games. Still uh, Lori, yeah. yeah, we have one more point to get our three points, our victory in this first block. What, what's yours, Laura? Uh, this might be the biggest one. Of yeah. the <laughs> it's three uh, points. Yeah, and it's Kansas City with three points. And holy smokes, is it, it has been a long time coming. Yes. Um, however, I think it, we could have seen this in weeks pre, um, prior as well. I mean, they've been so close in so many games, have made, obviously, critical trade um, that re- um, in, what is the word? I'm losing my words. It's been 3 a.m. Reinvigorated them. Oh, that involved, yeah. It's yeah. 3 a.m. Carolina, thank you. And um, so, you know, they're doing things to get themselves in a position to to really start to, I wouldn't say turn things around, but start to get more points. And I don't think this will be the last. I think that will um, definitely instill some confidence and, and a drive. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I think potentially another big trade around the corner um, for them as well. So, yeah. Oh, wow. Breaking news. No, no I mean, we've heard that. We've heard it's 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 out there, right? It's out there. I thought you had something else for us. Um, I think the scenes after and just seeing the players celebrate were really special um, because it, it means a lot and it's been a long time coming. Uh, so it was good for them to get a goal. Jeff, any last thoughts? Or are we on to the? I mean, we've got a big guest coming on. Yeah, let's let's get to Estelle here. Let's get to the comments. three points. Kansas City got them. We got them. It's all taken care of. We're gonna be back after this short break, and we're gonna bring you guys Estelle Johnson. So make sure you stay tuned.
Welcome back, everybody, to NWSL Live. This is the best part of the show. We get to bring you guys a player from NWSL, somebody that really, I mean, every week, it is such a fun segment, but I'm pumped about this. I get two back-to-back -back weeks with my Colorado girls. Like We had Kristen Hamilton last week. We have Estelle Johnson this week. Estelle, it's so nice to see you. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Colorado in the house. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we just, we just born and breed them. It's different there. It's different. It really what can is. we say? Um, it's so nice to have you. Thank you for joining us. And we honestly have a lot of questions about fashion and you bring the heat already with your WNBA hoodie. <laughs> that was like all the rage last year. So uh, you know, I think we need to get it, get right down to the nitty gritty. Are you the true fashion champion of NWSL? I'm really not. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's funny that you mentioned this hoodie off the bat because I definitely stole swag from my teammates in the locker room because Nicole Baxter had this and I was like, I'm stealing that. It's mine now. So, um, I think I'm just the biggest style thief. <laughs> hey. We all like pick and choose from other people, but you actually took that from Nicole. You said, it's <laughs> no, no, I didn't take her from her closet or anything. Oh, <laughs> I got my own. <laughs> um, well, we, we've got a couple, Je we did our digging and Jeff found some, some good photos of you because this has turned into <laughs> a thing now with Gotham. And I talked about it a few weeks ago, how it not was it's not just photos now it's like this montage of a video <laughs> your guys's fashion is just something else so so jeff did some digging we've got some photos of you and jeff uh, i know you've got questions you know you're a man oh, I do. <laughs> you of course <laughs> you're the one who found all the photos you we want to know like the inspiration behind these looks and um i think cole will bring up those those pictures here but what, when did this start? What, what was, what was behind you guys saying like, all right, let's make a thing out of this. Um, we really never said it. Um, <laughs> I think we just like started playing games and people just started showing up like a little bit nicer each time. And there's definitely a point where we all looked around the locker room and I'm like, I feel like you guys are attacking me because I thought I was best dressed last week and now it's this person. Next week, it's the next person. So we all felt like the competition had already begun without saying it. Um, and we just like, we, we have so much fun with it. Is there, is there any secret um, comp, um, competition between other teams too? You know, because other teams I feel like are starting to step up as well. I know, right? I, I feel like the rain is like breathing down our neck a little bit. Oh, totally. Yep. Um, no, we, we definitely like, I'm not gonna lie. We, we scroll through IG and look at everybody's reels and fits and we're like, Hey ladies, rain brought it this week. We got to make sure <laughs> everyone steps it up this week. <laughs> so it's been really fun. Just like how much, I mean, attention it's picked up. Yeah. I mean, no one has a better walk-in though than all of you. So yeah, this, what? They, they, they might have some good, um, some good style, but all of you, it's like at the most, it's the spin arounds. I feel. Do you guys line up? Is it like you line up in the entryway and you're like, okay, one by one, just model walk. We don't, but like, if there's a big group of people that show up at once, I'm like, hey, hey, you're in my picture. Move to the side. You'll get your turn. This is my time to shine. So we kind of like just like bully each other about it which makes it even more fun and we're like you were in the back of my photo like don't try it this week uh, that <laughs> kind of stuff so um it, it's just really like picked up steam and I just love how much like fun everybody's having with it yeah yeah I think Cole Cole has this up for, I don't know if this was last week this is a few weeks ago I think this is the one <laughs> your teammate Nicole um I think she called you the Gotham <laughs> In the, in the, um, what's like, what's the inspiration? You know, I mean, it changes every week, I'm sure, but maybe you can take us through this particular look for people who are like, maybe where do I? No problem. Do I do? <laughs> no problem. Um, well, I try to choose my game day fits for, based on certain criteria. Like the top criteria is companies that have sent me things. <laughs> um, there you go. Which is, Did you which hear is that companies now? <laughs> 
Um, yeah, cute company from uh, New York, actually. I just DM'd her and I was like, I love your stuff. And she was like, it's sent the second I got it and tried it on and it fit like that. I mean, come on, it comes with the matching <laughs> panty pack. <laughs> um, and also so those, those Converse shoes were from a gift from Tasha Cloud. So I had to be rocking. Oh, nice. Too. Yeah, so... Top nice. top tier for the free top outfit, tier, yes. then we go like the messages, support women's sports, all that kind of stuff, and then the last tier is just when I'm too tired. So <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I feel like your too tired look is even better than my like trying hard look. So um, do we have another picture, Cole? I feel like we have maybe one more. There was a green like silk number that you wore. Mm. Was it silk? It was like all greenish. Know oh oh the satin two piece satin yes two piece <laughs> I love that yeah that was a good one um give me some like TLC a... vibes <laughs> thank you that was a uh quarantine buy that I needed to wear <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of my fits are just like honestly I spent the last year and a half not going to stores and I've really got to step my game up out here. So yeah. it's yeah. been fun just to like look in my closet and see what I haven't tried and that kind of stuff. So um, I looked on your Instagram too. A few, I don't know when it was, maybe a couple of years ago. Were you in New York Fashion Week? I was, yeah. Um, I was in like this, this show that we had to be mannequins. <laughs> so like we would like come out and like walk in the line and then we had to like literally like freeze which was the hardest part because when you can freeze anytime but if someone says like no really freeze you're like I have an itch here and an itch there <laughs> but no it was an awesome experience um my sisters were able to come and like cheer me on and get all the behind the scenes footage so I have a lot of funny funny videos and stuff from that time but it was an incredible experience yeah that's so cool did that kind of spark your fashion or did you already like it before and liked modeling and that kind of was a, a cool way to bring everything together um well when I played in DC I was a part of a little fashion company I don't want to say little because it's blown up now um but yeah so I kind of got my feet wet while I was in that city and just I don't know it's cool. fun and it's just oh, like a yeah. different part of a different side that people don't really see about us so it's been a blast that's awesome I love that yeah. I love hearing those stories um okay uh, are we good with are we good with fashion and modeling I mean we Question might need for Lori. Some, we might seem need some runway tips Lori tomorrow when you're at the stadium I better see you walk in with some oh, some sure. sass. I got to strut my stuff. Yeah. Is, so perfect. Yeah. Well, I mean, if anybody gets got. in your photo, move them I'm aside. I'm to get to be an honorary <laughs> member of Gotham. So <laughs> game day fits. So I'll let you know, Estelle, okay? All or right. You, actually, you let me know if I'm. If I'm <laughs> I'll keep an eye out. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Awesome. Well, let's transition a little bit to um, on-field stuff. Um, you know, you've had a bit of a unique career in the fact that like, you played professionally, you've been outspoken about, um, you know, then you retired and then you made your way back and, and here you are with this like wonderful career and the longevity of it. Um, do you feel like you're very much a different player? Do you feel like you're a same player? How, how did that kind of start and um, start, stop, start um, affect you? I say more so on the field. Yeah, I think I'm definitely a different player than I was before mentally. Um, I think I have a lot of similarities, like with the, in the style that I play, that's just like ingrained in me. So I don't think that's going to change, but I'm just like taking that year away from soccer, really like put a lot of things into perspective and like, was I really done playing? I'm not sure. I don't regret like stepping away. It was the right decision to me to finish my master's and like get that kind of monkey off my back and um, I'm glad that I accomplished that but like coming back to the game I just am like so grateful for like everything like being able to show up every morning and complain about how sore I am <laughs> and then train a full session and go about my day just like in the best mood you know mm -hmm. um, so 
I definitely think that it changed like my perspective on the game and um, I'm getting a little bit older, not too old yet. So I think that I definitely think about that when I'm like trying to manage my body and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Jeff, you want yeah, to? Well, uh, sorry. Um, okay. <laughs> I want to ask you about, you know, playing for Cameroon as well, because um, you were born in Cameroon. Um, you know, I'm curious, you know, obviously a World Cup there, uh, not there, but, you know, played a World Cup for Cameroon now. And, um, you know, I think people maybe, you know, certainly avid fans probably know kind of the story of, of you starting out playing there and, and that journey to that World Cup. But, um, I mean, what's that been like? getting to play in that and, and how have you kind of, I guess, connected with your roots there with, with through the national team? Yeah. I mean, along with taking that little time of retirement, um, playing with Cameron has definitely reinvigorated my love for the game as well. It's just like a whole nother level as I'm sure you guys know, like when you're re representing your country, it's a whole nother ball game. Um, especially for me, I hadn't been back to Africa for a hot minute. And so being able to like, I mean, I've seen in qualifiers and stuff like that, I've seen more of Africa than I thought I ever would get the opportunity to see. And that honestly is like my favorite part is like being able to reconnect with, um, my homeland, um, and uh, the other side of me, you know, um, and my relationship with my teammates has grown so much. I hope that every single one of them finds a place to play um, if they're playing locally now. The composition of our team makes us very unique, I feel. Um, not all of us are pro, pro players. A lot of African players, not just Cameroon, have other jobs that they do every single day before they go train. Um, and so I just, I don't know, it like, brings a sense of like gratitude and also just like brings me back down to earth about what the what the sport is actually about that's cool it, i like you talking about africa too and you getting to explore and see so much about it is there something from those trips that you've taken in qualifiers that you're like man i can't i, I never thought that i got would get to see this and here i am in whatever country w what were those experiences like I mean, just the beauty of not even just the landscape, but the people. Mm. Um, I, although we lost to Zambia, <laughs> I'm glad that they did good. <laughs> um, but like that country, I, I never thought I was going to make it to Zambia, like of all countries. And the landscape was gorgeous. I just remember like FaceTiming my parents and being like, wow, like I am in so much awe at like, how just like gorgeous this landscape is and how happy the people are um it's just like everywhere we went people were like smiling and like greeting us and just like the happiness of people who um maybe don't have as many resources as we do here so it's just been like it's been awesome for my soul <laughs> i love that do you think that that perspective shift in some ways um has helped you in the nwsl because i think with the nwsl we can take it we can, you know, day to day, you can feel so serious and you've obviously played with the spirit and there's been some ups and downs with that team as we would know. And then obviously going to Gotham and ups and downs there. And then now um, really finding yourself in a, in a, a winning position with a team. Mm -hmm. So do you feel like that perspective has, has helped too, just to keep things like not necessarily lighthearted because professional athlete, right? So it's not always just like, Oh yay, this is great. Yeah. Yeah, no, totally. And I mean, kind of lighthearted. You're right. Like, I just, I feel that, and I'm sure you guys can relate to this because you played so long that we get stuck in like this bubble of like, when you're an athlete, you're playing with your heart and like your soul and you're putting everything that you have into this. So like, for it to not be going perfectly feels like a personal attack. <laughs> and we get like, so stuck in this bubble of like the NWSL and whatever it is that's going on with our team or within our league. But um, yeah, I think being a part of Cameroon has like helped me keep things in perspective, not only just like with how um, lucky we are to be able to fight for equal opportunities, 
but also that we are still getting to play and it's like I'm gonna grab grab onto every opportunity and just like take it for what it is which is like an opportunity to play and do something that I love Mm-hmm. And I'll just say, add on to that. I think that's m- massive while you're playing. Cause I think a lot of times, you know, as athletes, it's hindsight and you're like, Oh, I wish I could have been in the moment a bit more, been more lighthearted. So to be able to have that, like take place for you mentally and emotionally while you're playing is, is like awesome. And kudos to you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. <laughs> it's a balance. You, that's for yeah, sure. Totally. Um, you meant, you mentioned Zambia Estelle and I think, a lot of people, um, I mean, I guess I grouped myself in there, you know, exposed to Barbara Banda for the first time over the past few weeks and, and in, in an incredible way. Um, was that fun to go face to face? Fun? Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously, though, I, I wouldn't say fun, but I would say that I finally got, everybody got to see why we had such a hard time qualifying. I'm like, I'm telling you guys, this is like, you've never seen anything like this. (laughs) And I tried to explain to people, but now they finally saw for their own eyes. And honestly, the exposure that she's brought to like African soccer, I'm like, we need more of this. Let's keep going. Let's keep getting more African teams in more tournaments because there's so, so much untapped talent in Africa. And players in the end of itself, bring them over. Come on. It's going to be yeah. yeah, for sure. Um, I'm going to take a hard left turn. We've got a question from Twitch. Uh, Steve Unusual wants <laughs> to know, how, Estelle, how did you get so good at hula hooping? I didn't know you were good at hula hooping. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that's. <laughs> oh, they must have session of the, of the evening. <laughs> they must have seen the gothic gotham olympics oh my gosh yes of course it's i was hula ho- hooping around my neck like 100 miles per hour <laughs> <laughs> but hear me out the only reason i was doing it that way is because the hula hoops were not regulation weight so <laughs> what kind of gotham games are these They're not <laughs> regulation <laughs> we had our own gothic gotham olympic games that was and- so funny it was hysterical it was great uh, did you guys just need because we've all you, covering the league being in the league you get to this point and you just kind of you kind of need to like lighten the mood a little bit was that the idea behind it just to have something fun happen yeah I mean I assume so to be honest I think it was um our assistant coach Becky who put it all together and at first oh, we were like Becky. Oh, Becky, one more thing that we have to do. We don't want to be forced to have fun. (laughs) But then we showed up and saw everybody's like costumes and like that instantly went away. And we just like, it was hysterical. People were like eating baguettes and like. (laughs) Yeah, those those videos and pictures were funny. (laughs) That is so true. Forced to have fun in those situations when you're like, no, we do not need another team. Um, (laughs) Right. And here you are. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm glad they forced you because that was good quality entertainment for for everybody. Um, yeah, it really and the was. Dizzy Bat, the Dizzy Bat seems to have now found its way into like <laughs> birthday celebrations as well. Um, I just don't know how you guys do the Dizzy Bat and then actually try to kick a penalty. Like, are you nervous that someone's going to get hurt? Because every time I watch it, I'm like, I don't, I don't feel like this is going to end well. We had a lot of swing and a misses. Um, a lot of I get dizzy in like one turn. I know, and we were heckling each other. We we're like, "Go faster, you cheater! You're taking too long to kick. It doesn't count." So it was like a high stakes situation. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, speaking of of that and celebrating, um, we mentioned it earlier on. Carly Lloyd's retirement happening at the end of the season. So you guys get her for a few more games. Um, are you guys going to incorporate the Dizzy Bat into her retirement party? <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, we totally should. Now that I think about it. Yeah. You got my wheels turning about like we could do a whole, a whole event just for yeah. Carly. I think, I think oh. you have to, I mean, Dizzy Bat. Yeah. All right. right. It's on the list. It's on the Write list. Write it down. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, but but yeah, the, exciting for you guys to have more games with her. But what, what's it like being on the same team with Carly and just her retiring? Just thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, incredible. I played with her in Western New York, and she was amazing then. And I said it then, and I'll say it now. Like, there's nobody that you'll find that deserves the accomplishments more than her. There's nobody that you find out there that works harder than her and is so like focused and dedicated. So, um, yeah, I'm just, I mean, obviously grateful to have played with her, but just like so, so happy for her and everything that she's accomplished this far. I mean, I mean, what else is there? Right. (laughs) Um, All right. We've got, we've got a quick rapid fire. If you're down for it, it's like six, seven questions. We'll get you in and out, and then you're on your way, Estelle. This has been so much fun to talk with you. Um, all right, Lori, you want to start us off? Yeah, let's do um, favorite go-to go-to place to eat out. Oh, um, Namkeen is this chicken spot right down the road. Oh, amazing chicken and waffles. Just oh, like yes, Ooh, I need to know. Okay, okay, mm-hmm. that sounds good. <laughs> where where is this though? Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like yeah. I need the address. Well, off air, send me the address, okay? <laughs> yeah, I got you. I got you. <laughs> Jeff. Um, you were talking about travel earlier. So what is the vacation maybe? What's what's the best place you feel like you've been to? Nicest place for a vacation or or other Ooh, ooh that's a hard one. Oh, well, I went to Bali and I stayed at wow. this um like elephant res- like reserve hotel. Wow yeah so they like had the elephants like in this large place in the middle of the hotel and the rooms were like out out way far out and but you could still hear them like making their noise in the middle of the night so bali for sure (laughs) that sounds pretty awesome um have you been to that just made me think minus antarctica have you been to all the continents Mm, no i don't think so no not australia in South America, but I, I feel like you've been, been everywhere to... else. You're gonna have to think about I don't think I've that. been to South America. Have yeah. I? I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I don't think That's so. That's how you know you yeah. traveled a lot. All right. <laughs> I've been to that know, right? like, I gotta go look at my passport. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's your favorite sneaker? Uh, I'm not a big sneaker head, but I'm really a fan of like the the lifted like chucks. I'll go with yeah. that, and they're super okay. comfortable. Okay. Cool um favorite um player you've played with or best player I should say oh you're gonna get me in trouble uh, oh, this is fun we are trying to get <laughs> I'll you say my the most fun player to play with is Tasha Kai oh, oh Tosh throwing it back yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> good one. Oh my gosh pure about shenanigans a, and then yeah. like, produ- then produce on the field like it Which, makes no sense too best combination <laughs> <laughs> oh good wait mm. philadelphia days independent yeah Sims? girl yes we know that a style we know that <laughs> you <a> know <laughs> this <laughs> like minty drink that she would show up every day like starbucks minty drink <laughs> paul was like uh what <laughs> <laughs> and she did all that running without throwing up <laughs> totally every single day Wow. Which, uh, just pure shenanigans left and right in, yes. in Downingtown, PA. So good. <laughs> I need to get uh, Tasha Kai on for a uh, throwback al- alumni episode or something. <laughs> yeah, That'd be incredible. Uh, a special guest appearance from Estelle on that episode, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about, um, how about favorite venue you've played in and uh, that is not Red Bull Arena? Ah, oh, dang. <laughs> um, hmm. In Valenciennes, when we played in the World Cup, that that like perfect weather. There weren't very many bugs out. My family was there. Perfect weather, Jordan. I don't know perfect weather on our trip there. We didn't go there though. I didn't go to no, that city. We didn't get that. Yeah. So you missed out. It was wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Was that the one with the mountains right in the background? No. no. Um. It was like I don't even know how to describe it. It was just like. Well, everything perfect hot. you can think of perfect scenery the clouds i think said go cameroon it was amazing <laughs> and no bugs we we found out that that's a big for perfect weather no bugs 
Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. they get stuck to, I mean, you're swallowing a bug during a game when you're running. There's a lot of bugs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and they travel in packs. So if you go through that, it's over for you. <laughs> um, do you support a team in the Premier League or abroad? I don't. Yeah. That's okay. No worries. <laughs> um, okay. Last one then. Pre- yeah. Do you have any pregame rituals besides like your fashion walk? um yeah I call my dad on the way to the stadium nice yeah Yeah. (laughs) gotta keep it classic you know it's it's been working for a few years now so I'm not gonna switch it up oh I love that (laughs) um that's what it's about right you're you've talked about so many things what soccer really means to you and it's not only an expression of who you are but it's about all these people that have helped you get to where you are and you we've we've loved watching you play and really this has been so fun getting to know you a little bit more Estelle and I I think everybody have has enjoyed it on the other side too so thank Thank you for joining us yeah thank you guys so much it was great thank you all right thank you guys for uh asking some questions I know we got a couple of those in but we're gonna be back we're gonna do take it or leave it today guys so stay tuned for that just after this short break WSL live man this kind of flew by because Estelle Johnson was amazing Jeff and Lori I feel like that was 
one of the most interesting conversations that we've had yet here on NWSL Live. It was cool to hear her talk about so many things from fashion to her time in Africa. What, what did you like best out of that conversation, Jeff? Yeah, I think that's cool, the, the traveling, um, you know, that and, and really um, to her point, you know, we were talking about Barbara Banda a little bit there, but, you know, I do think we, you know, these international tournaments as they go, we kind of discover players that um, maybe should have been discovered earlier or maybe other people know about already, but just there hasn't been enough exposure. So um, I, I think, you know, that that's obviously one thing too, that, um, you know, firstly, I need to travel more because she sounds like she's been to some cool places, but um, yeah, um, have seen players that, you know, we don't see every day uh, that we should see more of. Right. Lori, was it nice to reminisce a little bit about those Philly times? I feel like, <laughs> I feel like you guys were just going to go on a little bit about that. There's yeah. some stories packed in there. Yeah, for sure. She's, and you know, it just made me think about like, you know, we've been talking about Carly Lloyd and the longevity of her career and Estelle Johnson in a lot of ways, the longevity as well, not as much um, publicity around her game, um, having not played directly with the U.S. Women's National Team, but um, but many years in this league and, and continues yeah. to, to be, um, you know, a first on a team sheet. Um, and I think that that's remarkable, especially with, um, you know, having to take the time off. And as she mentioned, uh, mentally and emotionally, a different player. So just fun to hear different people's journeys. And, and I had the ability to play with her early on. So in her career, and it was just as much as we talk about shenanigans with um, Natasha Kai, Estelle brings them too. And such a fun team. <laughs> so, such a fun team. Uh, yeah. And she's one of those players that has surpassed 10,000 minutes in NWSL action. So that's, I mean, that's a huge feat. So, um, all right, well, let's wrap this thing up. We got like 15 minutes to, to get all this stuff in. I think we can do it. We're going to bring take it or leave it back guys. How about that? You ready? Yes. Jeff right. and I favorite. I know it's one of my favorites too. Okay. So, um, the first one I have for you two to debate over is to take it or leave it. Allie Long is the best passing midfielder in NWSL. Go, what Jeff. You say. I mean, you got you got to take it. There's a, like factually correct. But <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a 94. I think it went up from 94 percent going into the weekend of um, passing accuracy. I did have a couple of people that replied to me when I tweeted about this. Like, well, how many of those passes are progressive? I think our our friend. Um, NWSL Analytica has that as well. And like the answer is plenty of them. Um, <laughs> Was that yeah. the answer? Plenty of them? That, that's my answer to <laughs> ask you plenty of them. So um, yes, I mean, I think like factually it's right in front of us. Lori, so you're taking it, Lori? Yes. Oh, I'm taking it as well too. And it, this is a fun topic for uh, being a, a midfielder. And I think, you know, it's something that we haven't really talked about a ton in the NWSL and pre really ever actually, you know, known to be pretty fast paced, um, you know, counterattacking a style, go as quickly as you can when you get it. And I think Allie Long, to her credit too, did this in OL Reign, just wasn't acknowledged a lot. And then, you know, being here with um, Gotham FC now, um, you know, has been a huge part of this team being consistently in the top three teams, or at least the top echelon of the, of the ranking. So uh, I'm taking it big time and, and credit to her because Last thing I'll say, we talk about reinventing yourselves and like finding ways in terms of an athletic league or, or wherever you're playing. And Allie's been around for a long time and continues to find ways to be impactful. And I think that's huge when it comes to, to players. Yeah. I can just hear her saying, thank you. Like, <laughs> like in her car. That, like, remember, remember she was in her car in our episode? She like, yes. <laughs> Yeah, so funny yeah <laughs> she was a good interview too we had Ali log on so okay you're both taking it um I would agree with you maybe maybe at some point we can talk about who's some of those other players that could challenge her for that but right now it's it's Ali long she has it outright uh, next thing I've got for you guys take it or leave it racing Louisville will find its way to make the playoffs Lori you go first this time Oof. Oof. I'm not going to take it, um, even though I, part of me does want to take it mm -hmm. because I do feel that they're like starting to come in some of those um, non-negotiables uh, that they have instilled in themselves, right? Um, the hard work defensively, 
and now they've added a few different personnel that's going to help them. I do just think that at the end of the day, they've been a little bit too inconsistent. Um, and I'll be curious to see how that looks when it really comes down to the wire. I think these next five games for a lot of teams are critical to get points mm. and um, they're going to have to dig deep with such a young squad to be able to do that. So I'm going to leave it. Okay. On the yeah. Yeah, I'm going to leave it. I was going to say, Lori did not take it. That's not the name of the segment, Lori. <laughs> We're giving Lori a pass today. I'm not going to take it. Not, I'm not Lori gets the it. pass on the words. Don't try to give it to me, Jeff. I, I am not going to take it. I, I do think, I agree with Lori. I think things are starting to come together. Pieces are starting to come together. We saw that against Gotham. And to her point, um, on the consistency front, that was a game that I thought Racing Louisville did just about everything that they needed to until that final, you know, 10, 15 minutes, they give up the equalizer and, you know, look, it's a long season. They're not that far adrift and they have the games in hand uh, of on a few teams in front of them. So, you know, certainly they're right there. Uh, but I think that, you know, we've got to see the question for me is like, is it coming together slightly too late? And, mm. and there's an argument to make that the answer is no because they're kind of in that mix. But, um, you know, I think other teams as well getting some, you know, as we've talked about, plenty of star players back, some some really influential players back that, you know, maybe there needed to be a little bit more ground made up in this time period. Yeah. And a lot of this season, it does seem like Michelle Betos has made some incredible saves and has kept them in a lot of games. You do, if you are a racing fan, you've got to like that combination of salmon in a deem up front and what yeah. that could potentially mean for you guys going forward. So, um, all right. You're both, you took the first one, you guys left the second one. Maybe we can get a, a 50, 50 on, <laughs> on this next one. I don't know. I don't know. We don't have to, but the last one I have for you, we're looking at stats and we're looking at teams here. Simone Charlie has five goals on the season. Take it or leave it. Charlie scores 10 goals this season for Portland. What do you guys think, Jeff? I'm going to take it. I think we've got plenty of season left. Um, you know, obviously, Portland has, has been playing well at the top of the table. I think, you know, best game of the weekend was was Portland Orlando in in a lot of ways, and she scores that equalizer, um, which I think the Thorns were ecstatic about their actual performance of of what they put in against Orlando on the road there. So, you know, I, I think Portland obviously playing well. You know, that combination of Sophia Smith and Simone Charlie, we'll see how, you know, a healthy Morgan Weaver kind of fits into that. But I'm taking it based on form and I'm taking it because um, I think I'd love to see a competitive golden boot race with plenty of goals. So if she's a 10, you know, she's chasing Sydney LaRue and in, in the mix with a couple of others right now. So mm. the 10, there's got to be plenty okay. of goal scoring in the rest of the season. Yeah, I, you know what? I am not, not going to leave it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just checked. I just want to do that. I am taking it as well um, because I think we've seen what um, Simone can do, you know, just throughout a season so far. And then you brought up a really good stat off air, Jordy, about four of those five goals are with her head. And I think that is an area that Portland has been exceptional in which is a service into the box from the wide areas whether it's set pieces whether whether it's a run of play and once they start to get all of their players back from olympic break they're just going to become that more um, proficient and efficient and i think that charlie can be a critical piece that especially because you are still gonna have to manage some players later on in the season and she'll definitely find herself continuing whether it's starting or coming off the bench for for many minutes so I'm taking it. Come on. We've already got a pretty good race between Sid LaRue and Ashley Hatch and a few others lingering behind. So let's, let's right. go. Let's go. Um, all right. So we're rooting for that golden boot race for sure. I like that you both took this too. And I, I don't know about you. I, I know the stats say that she scored four goals with her head, but Charlie finds herself in so many hmm. breakaway situations that it's bound to happen where she scores off of those. Um, just the way she can create space for herself is she sets herself up and then she, she keeps scoring with her head. Like she's easily getting 10. So um, I feel like those were fun questions. If you guys have any take it or leave it for us ever, um, send them to us. We're happy to add those to our list. We love this segment. It um, makes us think a little bit different and it brings up some fun stats that are happening within NWSL. 
Well, that's really it for the show, you guys. It's actually kind of a busy week. Not only ICC happening, but the Women's Cup is happening as well. Lori, that's why you were up at 3 a.m. You are traveling to Portland because you will be on the call tomorrow. Are you on the call for both games in Portland? Yes, on the call for both games and then the third and final on Saturday. Okay, do you want to do you want to plug? Do you want to tell people where to yeah, where to watch you? So it's Barcelona versus Lyon in the first game, ESPNU. Um, I don't want to give you the wrong exact times um, because time is weird right I now. Look listings. Uh, yep. But ESPNU, and then the second game is our very own Portland Thorns versus Houston Dash. And that's a late night game on ESPN2. And same networks on Saturday as well. ESPNU for the third place game for the finals, ESPN2. So definitely tune in. Awesome um, chance to catch some individual teams, but also two of the best ever European teams that you're not going to want to miss. Barcelona, who just won the Champions League back in May against Chelsea, and then Lyon, goodness gracious, powerhouse for years, and they won the, the previous one in 2019. Right. Barcelona, actually. So it will be a rematch of the 2019 uh, Champions League final. Okay, now she's just given us all our stats that she's going to use on the broadcast. So oh, there we go. Um, <laughs> for herself. Tune in, everybody. She's prepared. There's a Women's Cup happening as well in Louisville. Um, Bayern Munich is there, Chicago, Louisville, and why am I blanking on the other one, Jeff? PSG. 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 Yeah. So great games happening um, midweek. So check them out. But lots of NWSL action this weekend. Parting thoughts? Or are we ready to get out of here, guys? Um, I'm ready for bed. <laughs> I have. <laughs> I am ready for bed. And I, <laughs> Uh, great show. Really good to see Estelle on there. And last thing, we really should keep saying with Carly, special, special player, four international games left, and then also a number of NWSL um, um, games with Gotham FC and potential playoff yeah. games. Go Gotham's a contender, so. Yeah, very yeah. much. Could draw out those stuff. games. Yep. Get to those games at Red Bull Arena, watch Gotham, watch Carly Lloyd, watch just Stella Johnson too, right? Um, and come and watch us every Tuesday. Lori Lindsay, Jeff Kasuf, thank you guys so much. That's it for us. NWSL Live comes to a close. Thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you next week.